Hello and welcome to Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host. Um, Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event that we do. Uh, we cover all sorts of NLC activities, library topics presented by NLC staff and guest speakers. Um, we do these every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. They're free, one hour sessions. And um, but we make sure of all sorts of different kinds of presentations that we do, book, review, book reviews, interviews, tours of things, uh, little mini training sessions, whatever we can come up with. This morning, we are doing Nebraska Learners 2.0 wrap up. I'm um, going to go over this most recent Learn 2.0 program that we did and uh, see how it all went. Um, joining me today are the four of us that actually did, were in charge of <laughs> running the program, I guess. Um, myself, Michael Sowers, Elena Novotny, and Susan Nisley. So the four of us are all here to go through this with you to this morning. Um, I don't even know how we want to start. Does someone want to do the little... Let's just start a little intro of what it was. Okay, um, for the benefit, this is Michael, um, for the benefit of the recording, for people who might be listening to this on the podcast, I just wanted to do a quick review of what the program was, uh, most of the people who are uh, in the session today were participants. Um, Nebraska Learners 2.0 was based on the 23 things model of online learning that was created a few years ago. Uh, we ran it, we uh, created 23 different things ranging from uh, lifelong learning to blogging to RSS to podcasts to YouTube, to Flickr, several other topics. Uh, the program lasted 16 weeks, so it was uh, October, November, December, and January. If I remember that correctly, anybody speak up. Um, those who completed it on time, and we'll have some of those statistics in a few minutes, we offered 15 continuing education credit hours, and so a lot of people earned a lot of credit for this. And at the end of the session, we will actually be drawing names from those who completed uh, to win one of nine MP3 players that we actually have sitting here in front of us. Um, the URL at the bottom of this slide is for uh, the uh, where the website was. I'll, I'll read that out real quick for those that uh, uh, are just listening to an audio-only recording. Um, it's uh, l2ne.blogspot.com. And uh, from there, what you would just do is click on the About the Program link, and that will get you kind of into the beginning of it there. So that's kind of the overview. Um, it seemed like everybody pretty much enjoyed themselves, and um, I think we got some uh, statistics to share with you next. Go ahead, someone. Oh, me too. I'll keep going. Okay. Um, okay. Piled them so. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, if I put the numbers together, I'll read them. Um, total number of participants, um, what we did was we gauged the number of people that told us, hey, I've created a blog, which was step uh, three and four of the program. We ended up with 165 participants, which I think was well above what we all expected. I was kind of going for 100 people. Uh, so 165 was really wonderful to, to see. Uh, we had people who took all 16 weeks to do it. We have at least one person, I think, who did the whole thing in a weekend, yeah. as I recall. Um, more, you know, kudos to you. I don't know how you slept, but uh, you, or if you slept, but you did that. Um, the rest of these, some of these numbers are uh, maybe not 100% accurate. They're as close as we could. Uh, the number of blog posts written by all the participants I've got two numbers there. That first number, 2,383, that was the number of posts that we could find and account for when the program ended. So on the what was January, 30th. January 30th, that Monday morning, we went, we went through uh, and the number we had was 2,383. The second number there in parentheses, uh, 2406, that was the number of posts as of about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. So what we're showing there is some folks are actually still posting to their blog. Now, some of them might be trying to finish up some of the last things, but we do know that some folks uh, have actually just continued their blog and are writing about things that have nothing to do with the program. They're actually keeping up with their blog. So, so we want to give uh, a little applause to those folks to also. Um, the number of comments left on the blog for the program itself, uh, 2,257, that is also as of January 30th. 
Um, this number, I think, is a little low because we've sent a bunch of email amongst ourselves in the last couple of days. But just between the four of us, um, that number is probably more like 400 emails that we started uh, shipping back and forth uh, based on... Okay, I'm a little too loud. We're back up here a little bit. Um, based on uh, just, uh, you know, how do we do this? How do we want to deal with this problem? How do we want to a answer this person's questions? So a, a lot of email came through uh, with us. And then a number of people who actually finished on time and actually have their name into the drawing and will be earning the 15 C hours is 83. So we had about a 50% uh, completion rate. Yes, congratulations to everybody. Um, as I mentioned, some folks are, are still working on it. Um, but again, that was a, a very good completion rate. You know, 50% might not sound high, but considering the amount of work that you needed to, to, to actually do all of this, yeah. um, quite, quite an impressive number. All right. Uh, Lynn, I want to take this one. you. Sure. I just wanted to toss this slide in here. I found it interesting. Um, for those of you that took part in the um, program, you might remember thing 14 was about delicious. And one of the things we asked you to do was um, what tags would you assign to the Nebraska Access website? So I just put together all the tags that I had collected into a tag cloud, and you can see um, genealogy is the clear winner of the group with 13 <coughs> folks doing that tag, um, followed closely behind by databases, magazines, Nebraska Access, reference. So I just found it interesting to see how folks would tag Nebraska Access, and this just kind of shows you what happened. Social networking at work there. <laughs> Very true. Um, okay, now what we've done ourselves here, the four of us, is we've been attempting to keep up with all of those 160 some odd logs and of uh, people that um, finished and pulled out some quotes that we thought were very uh, interesting fun whatever um, from various blogs um, so we're just gonna read through these and talk a little bit about just the kind of things that people were doing I, I think this one is your yeah okay, okay. Was, yeah the first two are mine again um, <laughs> we're, we're going to kind of break their rule of don't read the slides, but you know these are worth it, especially uh, since we are recording this. Um, this first one was from the blog to the library beyond, and this was, I recall, um, the one of the final ones. What'd you think of the program? Give us your feedback. And I said, this discovery program also forced me to try things that I probably would have never used before. I tweeted, I added to a wiki. I was at a library board meeting two weeks ago and we were discussing slideshow presentations for some reason. One of our board members said that slideshow presentations were so hard to transport from computer to computer because they take up so much space, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you know, I laughed at that because I've been a library board member. Um, and she said, I told them about SlideShare. So this is, this is a great example of of showing that one of the purposes we had here was to kind of, you know, in some cases force people to try some things that they probably wouldn't have tried on their own. And then she gave this great example of how just in her job, just even if she's not going to use SlideShare personally, she was able to break it up in conversation and actually educate somebody else because of something she learned in this program. That's awesome. The, the other one that caught my eye, and this was earlier on in the program, um, and I've actually now used this slide in a couple of presentations, uh, was from Dawn and Gordon, and she said, I know of an 80-year-old retired veterinarian who bought a Kindle. He loves it and is proud of his tech suaveness. He downloads everything he reads, even though he can't download here in Gordon and must drive tw about uh, west 20 miles to get reception. Um, a lot of people have complained in Nebraska about the Kindle and the fact that uh, pretty much if you don't live in Lincoln, Omaha, or on I-80 within about two miles, um, the Sprint service that the Kindle works with won't uh, work. And then other people are, you know, generalized that the older folks, you know, they're not going to grab onto this technology, and, and we serve a lot of older people, so should we focus on that? And here we've gotten a perfect example of somebody who got a Kindle, loved it, and actually just to download content onto it drives 20 miles just to do it. And, and I think that's amazing. It uh, shows that we can't necessarily assume what technology um, or what services uh, any of our patrons might actually uh, uh, cling on to. 
Yeah, this is Alana. Um, the next three quotes are ones that I pulled, and I have to say, trying to limit myself to such few quotes was <laughs> almost impossible. Um, there was just so many great comments and statements made, not only in the blogs, but even when in all the IM chats I took part in. So I, I loved it all. Um, the first two on the slide here are actually both dealing with education, and I thought this was great. Um, Ange said, I, it's gotten me thinking about going back to school and getting an MLS. I don't know for certain that I'm ready to make that leap yet, but I feel much closer to it than ever before. So I think that's just wonderful. And then Nebraska Bookworm uh, made a comment along the same lines. Now, after completing the program, I'm thinking about taking more classes, maybe even going back to school. So, again, great. Yeah, it's just cool that people are getting back into the whole studying and learning something new, you know, idea. Mm -hmm. uh, this gets them doing it. I think. Yeah. Um, the next one, um, on Denise's learning experience, she made this in reference to, she was doing her um, thing about YouTube and was talking to a 13 year old telling them that they were, what she was doing. And this is sort of what the 13 year old told her. Um, I just briefly mentioned this to one of my 13 year olds who asked me what I was doing. His immediate response was, it would be perfect for the library because there are so many how to YouTubes ones that explain all the kinds of ways to make things and how things work in experiments that you can learn from. I just think that's really great to see that the 13 year old gets it. Um, as reading over all the blog posts and stuff, it was easy to see that some people uh, were able to see how these things would exactly relate to the libraries. And other times, uh, people were struggling a little bit to see how they could use it in a library, but. I, this is a great example of a 13 year old that gets it. So. Oh, and, and I can tell you the two things I've learned from YouTube is how to make a glow in the dark Mountain Dew and uh, <laughs> what, what happens when you put Mentos in Diet Coke. Well, I, yes. I think those are the two things <laughs> I've learned the most I from YouTube. I have not YouTube. seen glow in the dark Mountain I'm doing it. Look that one that, that one's pretty cool. <laughs> it's not drinkable anymore, but it glows in the dark. <laughs> That's good to know that it's not drinking the dark. <laughs> Um, and then the last quote I used, I just think this was a great because uh, I can just imagine myself sitting at home watching TV and this kind of comes to me. Um, this is from, okay. Books are great. Books are great. Thank you. <laughs> we, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have a lead speak uh, thing. I think <laughs> we we're going to need to do that. that. Um, and now when watching TV, brothers and sisters last week, when they mentioned Twitter, I can actually say I have done that. I just think that's great that we're able to take what you played with, tried, learned, and to have these moments when you're in other parts of your life and say, oh yeah, I know what that is now. I understand mm -hmm. the vocabulary. I get the jokes they may be making on TV, the comments, how they're relevant since you've actually had a chance to play with and experience these um, different tools. So. But those are the three I picked. Like I said, it was really hard. There a lot more I could have chose. Um, this is Susan, and um, the next two slides uh, have some of my favorite quotes. And these are just sort of samples of many quotes that convey the same sort of uh, thinking and experience. And one thing that I found really gratifying as I read through people's blog posts was that people were really gaining a sense of confidence in their ability to try out some of these new technologies. I thought it was great when um, people would talk about a specific tool and um, ideas that they had about how they could use that specific tool. But even more so, just the fact that people felt like they could try out things that they never thought they could try out before. They had more confidence in their ability to figure it out, I thought. And so I'll just quickly, um, for the sake of the recording, read these two quotes that I um, pulled out. This is Books Are Great Again, and um, he or she wrote, I can't even begin to explain the amount of confidence you have given me in the world of technology. What a great outcome. Mm -hmm. And then on VC's blog, um, VC wrote, when I first started this class, I was really nervous. Upon completing each thing, my confidence grew. Before long, I could hardly wait to learn the next thing. Next slide. And then the other theme that really um, 
it makes me feel like I'm just sort of sappy and sentimental, but <laughs> anytime people were talking about the sense of community they felt, I just thought that was so wonderful and so neat to witness. Um, we started out as all of these individual people participating in this program, and by the time we got to the end of it, people were commenting on each other's blogs. They were talking about, they were using the pronoun we, as in we are doing this, we are learning this. Um, people were posting, you know, posting things that they found and saying, I thought other uh, participants might like to see this. So there was a real sense that people, people felt like they had a sense of community. It was like a learning community. Um, people had the sense that they had an audience. And I think that is a real important takeaway. Um, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a social network before we started this program, and now we do. Mm -hmm. And um, here are a couple of quotes. I really enjoyed the feeling of community we created here. That was to the library and beyond. Dancing Thoughts from Green Farm said, tackling the question of takeaways. Wow, I feel more connected to other library people through reading their blog posts, profiles, etc. I want to meet some of these bloggers that I only know through their blog names. And then finally, um, HPL Meandering wrote, as a learning tool, this has been awesome. I have seen so much interaction and mutual assistance among my staff during our journey to thing number 23. Um, this just makes me feel so great. And um, again, I feel sort of sappy and sentimental, but here at the Library Commission, I'm really lucky I have uh, my colleagues here and we can learn from each other. But I know that some people are out there in one-person libraries, two-person libraries, and they don't always have that experience. And I think it's neat if we can virtually sort of create that experience for other people. So that's sort of my two cents. I, I want to interject here. The, the story about knowing somebody only through their blog names. I go to like national conferences and somebody will say, oh, it's I'm so-and-so, nice to meet you. And we kind of look at each other like maybe we know each other. And finally someone will say, well, my blog is. And then we'll suddenly go, oh, yeah, I read you. <laughs> You know, we almost have to start putting blog names on name tags uh, after our real names. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, oh, this is mine. This is Krista. Um, this is just one quote that I pulled out. Um, we had a lot of people doing, learning lots of new things here, and it just their kind of overview at the end. This is another one from the Thing 23, I believe. Um, the Pigeon Racer, one of our bloggers. Uh, web technology, as far as software is concerned, is becoming fascinating for me. The more I learn, the more I want to learn. Once I'm homebound, these technologies will allow me to communicate in another way other than just the telephone. Taking this course is probably one of my wife's better ideas. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a nice little um, nod to his wife, obviously. And planning for the future. But, yes, yeah. and so realizing that this isn't just, you know, like Elena was saying, you can use this in other things, areas of your life, um, in not just in your library, but, you know, that's what we're hoping that you use a lot of these things. But there's more to it than just doing it in your job. And a lot of people blogs too mentioned um, I am in with their uh, parents or I am in with their kids and how it's so much better now communicating with them um, using instant messaging services or just other things that they've used in other parts of their life too so that it can just open up a whole bunch of new um, things for you and I think just another comment about this quote um, this person I believe his wife is the librarian and she participated and then she oh. talked him into participating <laughs> but I just think from um, conversations I've had with her I think he has some some health issues and some disability issues that so when he talks about being homebound I think that's a real concern mm -hmm. for him that He's going, not going to be able to get out and communicate as much as he'd like to. But now that he's discovered that it's not, that won't necessarily happen. Yeah. And, and I have learned people race pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> No idea. We did one a lot. Of, <laughs> yeah, some people went with big themes on their on their blogs, which is great. Everything they were looking for in YouTube or in a slide share or anywhere was on a certain theme. So um, yeah, you learn a lot from reading other people's <laughs> ideas and research. So now we've told you some of the things that we thought about the program, um, things that just came up. We want to know now. Open up the floor to you guys. This is your turn to talk. What did you all think of Nebraska Learners 2.0, our program? How did it go? How did it not go? Anything you want to share? Um, we do know that some of you who are here did actually participate in the program, and we know who you are. <laughs> so, do you want to have a show of hands or yes, sure. this for who participated? If you want to, yeah, actually, that'd be good. We can then they'll be here in the recording. If you did participate in our Nebraska Learning 2.0, can you check your little um, raise your hand? Or okay, that's the way to do it. Yeah, there we go. Six so far. I know you did, Dan. I see you there. <laughs> little hand raise at the top there. 
So a little so, more than half. Yeah, a little more than half of people here today participated, which is about our turnover for actually starting and finishing the whole thing, too. Well, I, I specifically emailed Pam yesterday. I know you're out there. You raised your hand. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm hoping you have a microphone. I'd kind of like to, to, if you do have a mic, put you on the spot just a little bit. Um, not everybody might know how you guys handled this at your library and, and maybe just sharing that experience and, and how it turned out for you uh, from your point of view. And for those of you who don't know, you can turn on your mic by holding down the control key, and I think we'll, we'll clear the raising of the hands, oh, too. Sure. Um, there you are. I just saw you do something there, Pam. Okay. So, can you hear me? Yes, um, step back a little bit from the microphone, I think. Okay. Is that better? better? Yes. yes. That's kind of weird, because I can hear myself. <laughs> We're going to turn off our... All right, go ahead. Um, I think the way we did it, I actually challenged all of my staff to um, participate in the LEARNS 2.0. And I think 14, or 14 of us finished, um, and which was great out of a to we have a total of, of <coughs> excuse me we have a total of uh, 20 staff and that includes secretaries and you know everybody so not not everybody chose to participate and that was okay I didn't browbeat people too much but again I think the thing that was so wonderful for us was that whole sense of community even though we're in the same building most of us have our own little things that we work on most of the time this gave us common things that we could work on and work together and play with together and it was just great and we used these as discussion starters at staff meetings um, we talked about ways that we could use the different tools um, in our work every day, either internally or externally as uh, services for our patrons. And we shared things um, at staff meetings so that the whole group could see what people had created using some of the web tools. And it was just, it was just fantastic. Great, thanks. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that the, the, the sense of community happened. Um, many people might not know this. We kind of did a pilot program of this with our staff here, too, before we, we sent it out to everybody in the state. And um, that did happen here, too. And, you know, large, larger um, population of people, employees, and three floors. And, you know, I'm not sure I can name everybody in the building. Uh, <laughs> honestly, can, I'm bad with the names anyways. And so, yeah, that did kind of pull together that community a little bit. Um, does anybody else have um, things they want to share? Um, you know, things we maybe should have done differently, things you thought we did well, things you do, you know, any other suggestions or comments? Yeah. Carol? If you, do you have, if you don't have a microphone, Carol, you can use the text chat to type. Oh, she's gonna leave. Oh, you have a mic? Okay. Go ahead, Carol. Hold down your control key and keep holding it for when you're talking. Okay. I don't you turn my mic. I'm a one-person uh, school librarian app in the Panhandle, and I didn't have um, any other workers to share this with. And so one thing I was thinking is we could form smaller communities of the 150 that were taking the class and have a, a group within this group to talk with. that made that comment in your blog and we were actually talking about that um, before our session started that that seemed like a good idea people did start commenting on each other's blogs um, but 
there were so many people participating, many more than we anticipated, that I think that was intimidating um, to, to try to keep track of everybody's blog. And so that seemed like a really good idea to maybe group people into a little bit smaller communities, not that they couldn't read everybody's blog, but that they did have a group where they would maybe feel more, be able to have more conversations back and forth, and they, they wouldn't feel overwhelmed by the number of blogs to follow. Mm -hmm. Uh, anybody else want to share something that they learned or what they did or comment on um, how it went for them? Um, I, oh, Pam again? Go ahead, Pam. Um, I just wanted to say that one of the things that I was really impressed with this as a training model um, we have a horrible time trying to figure out how to do training with our entire staff because nobody's here at the same time and, you know, those kinds of issues that everybody has. And I know this was a lot of work on you guys' part, but I just think as a training model, this was wonderful. And it really solved some problems that we face when we're trying to train our staff on common skills or common tools. Um, I, I know a lot of people made comments similar to that, Pam. A lot of people talked about how nice it was to not have to travel, mm -hmm. um, to be able to work from home at their own pace. and. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully, it was nice because it wasn't just an, even though you were working on it alone at home or at your library, there was a sense of community. Um, one other person, I, I, um, I don't know, Dan, if you have a microphone or not, but I know that you, uh, you blogged a lot and you were really participating a lot, um, and I have a sense that maybe you had, um, You've done quite a bit of online interacting before this program started, but you really seem to have a lot of insights. I just wondered if you could comment a little bit about your experience with the program. I, I think it was really a good program. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I really think that the social networking is the way people do get together today uh, because you can you know, sort through and, and find people who have your interests. And, um, you know, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And I think for me in, in marketing, I think libraries have to be on this edge of, of doing this and not only putting out your stuff, but going out as a librarian on the social network, just like you would in your community and getting to know as many of the people as you can and getting to know other librarians and find out what other libraries are doing. That, those were some of the things I really enjoyed. Um, this is Susan again. That was one of uh, the things that I really enjoyed reading about in your blog or that really spoke to me was you talked a lot about the marketing potential of some of these tools. And I know at the end, you, you really sort of uh, zeroed in on who are our different people that we try to communicate with, who are our audiences, and you know which of these audiences can we reach through these tools. And that included um, younger people who do use these sorts of online tools, um, and then people who aren't necessarily in your community but are thinking of moving to, to your community. And I thought that was a, a really, not, not everybody always thinks of those people as um, potential audiences, but I think that is good a good reminder. Well, yeah, that's... Go ahead. Oh, um, yeah, that's uh, one of the things we always look at in what we do at South Sioux is not just what's going to help today uh, as far as our local people, but how is our library imaged in, you know, the rest of the area? That's always good to think about. Yes, definitely. 
Um, we actually have a comment on our text chat too. Uh, Judy Cranstaff says, um, here in RVLS, Republican Valley Library System, Nebraska Learns 2.0 is a constant source of conversation at any gathering. We share and laugh and complain and identify ourselves. <laughs> I like the complain part. Yeah. <laughs> I like the identify part. <laughs> um, confessing to who you are. Confessing, yes, we confess. Um, but that's good. That's that anytime people are getting together, they're talking about this program and talking about it amongst themselves, whether they you did comment on each other's blogs, you can also comment to each other in person, too, which is great when you're just having your other meetings. And... Uh, Laura Hess at Stanton Public Library is also saying in the text chat, Carol and I are the only two here, and we like that we did not have to travel and take time off from our busy schedules to learn new things. That was great. That is kind of the point of like doing it all online, um, being able to do it together with your other staff members at your library that are in, either in your library or in your area. Um, that's great. I think many people express that in their 23, <laughs> their last thing that they like not having to travel. Mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, something else that Dan was talking about, the way that social, um, some of these social networking tools, some of these tools out there let you interact with not only people in your community, but other librarians locally. But um, one thing that I think, uh, I know, I think it was one of the Hastings Public Library folks happened to mention um, a book that they had in their collection on RSS or something. And mm. the author of the book actually commented on the blog post. And I thought that was such uh. a great reminder that um, how easy it is to really sort of enter these conversations and become part of a larger uh, community. So I thought that was really neat. Yeah, and uh, I'll throw in a little tech behind that because some people might wonder, well, how the heck did the author ever you know, find that? Um, you get a little further in RSS and searching, you can set up feeds on like your own name or, you know, the ego searches or vanity searches. Um, and I, I do that a lot, uh, you know, being published and things like that. So I, I've seen a Twitter of somebody saying, I just put Michael's book on hold at the library or I just ordered from Amazon. And I, I, I Twittered him back and I said, hey, I hope you enjoy the book. And they, they was like, this is cool. You know, so my guess is in that situation, you mentioned the, the title and mentioned the author. The author had some sort of search set up and saw it and responded. So even if you haven't necessarily told people about your blog if it's out there google's going to index it everybody else is going to index it and um people will find it whether you thought they were going to or not <laughs> you become part of the larger community beyond just nebraska librarians doing 2.0 <laughs> any other comments questions anything anybody wants to share about their experience with our learning 2.0 program anybody here wants to encourage <laughs> And there's a delay with typing and stuff. Right. And raising of hands. Yeah, Jean, can we put you on the spot? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, wow. I don't know. I think one of my favorite things was probably the the one where I think it was number twenty, where you had all the all the different things that you could, you know, these are some things, you know, we've done all these, but here's a lot a lot more. Um, that was kind of neat, even though it was 23 things, you know that there's another, you know, how many more things out there. And so that was, that was kind of fun for me. Um, and it also forced me to kind of catch up with certain things, you know, I, I but I found myself getting lost in certain things, like going to Flickr and putting pictures up there and I'm going, Hey, I need to do more pictures and more pictures. And then I had to get, kept pushing myself to get back on track. Otherwise I would have never finished the 23 things. And I also think it's a it's a great tool for the all the tools are great for libraries and I've actually used quite a few that I hadn't used before. So when people come into the library, they're going, "Well, I need to do this or I need to do that. Have you ever seen this?" And I'm going, "Hey, I just learned that in 23 things." So. Oh, that's great, and that's what we're hoping that oh, this isn't just going to be an end that you just did the thing and you're done. That you continue using them either for yourself personally or um, for the library, whichever you know works for you. And I can relate to the Flickr thing as someone who was just uploading 500 plus photos from Las Vegas last night. <laughs> um, so you know, titling and tagging all those are real fun. Never ending. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody else? 
Yeah. Anybody else got a comment they want to make before we move on to our last couple of things? Because I know some of you want to know if you want an MP3 player or not. <laughs> All right, you want to okay, move on? Cool. All right. Now, we also learned some stuff on our own side. I think you had some notes. Yeah, I, I, I took some notes here, and, and uh, two I just wrote down. Um, some things we didn't necessarily anticipate, um, these first two, and I'm not sure there's anything we can really do about them, but um, I, I noticed the large number of people at schools saying, I have to do this at home because the stuff you're trying to show me is blocked at school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when we got to YouTube and, and uh, was a big one and Twitter and things like that. I noticed so, that too, yeah. So, yeah, there, there was a large number of people who, even if the boss supported doing it at work, they kind of had to do it at home. But then looking at it from the complete opposite, uh, and then Carol, we'll, we'll let you in here for a sec. Um, we had one library that had a union issue that wasn't allowing their librarians to do it at home because it was a work-related thing and they weren't supposed to do work from home. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those situations where you're, you're never going to make it perfect for everybody. Uh, somebody's always going to have a problem. Carol, you have a comment? I just wanted to add that I can't even access the blogs at school, so I had to do it at home. So, so in your case, Blogger was blocked. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could, we could, that would be another presentation, I guess. <laughs> but, um, you know, let's, uh, no, yeah, I'm not going to go there. That's another matter to fight, yes. <laughs> Although, having gone through these many things, as, as Michael was talking about the schools being blocked, he got me thinking while I was sitting here. This showing that now that you've learned that how what is out there and what it can be used for and what other people are using it for, a lot of these things are blocked, I think, out of just by tech people, IT people, out of just not knowing what they're really for and what they can be used for. This may be a chance for you to now show them, look, I needed to, I wanted to go to the site to do this, and here's this course that I could have taken or here's this YouTube video that I could have used to teach our students how to do this research project or whatever and because you're blocking it just outright blocking it I couldn't use this source so it might be some a way to open up a conversation about do these things really need to be blocked is there ways that we can teach the students how to properly and appropriately use them at the schools you know use it as a, as a stepping point to get some of these things opened up because really a lot of the blocking is done out of fear of what the little kids will find but there's so much that you've now learned that's out there that isn't a problem it's a good stepping point possibly to help work on some of that um <clears throat> then also just a couple other things of you know if we if we were to do it all again what might we do differently um the, the one thing we didn't have anybody do was actually register to do this as as you normally would register for, well as you register for this session or as you would register for any other live class that we would do and um Unfortunately, through not doing that, we then didn't have everybody's email addresses all up front, and we didn't necessarily have a way to email everybody all at once who was participating. So we ended up emailing everybody in the state, even if you weren't participating. Uh, so we would probably do that differently again in the future. Um, also, one thing in Blogger that we probably should have pointed out specifically that we didn't is you can actually set a setting so that if somebody leaves a comment on your blog, you get a copy of it in your email. Um, which is really handy. You know, I'll get comments left on posts that I wrote two years ago, and if I didn't have those comments coming into my inbox, I wouldn't even know that they happened. So if you are going to continue your blog, you might want to go into your blog settings and find that. I think it's under the email, actually. It might be the tab. I don't remember exactly what it is in there. Um, the, the third one we had, and, and this is kind of an observation, we're still discussing amongst ourselves how we feel about it, but, you know, we noticed some people wrote long, beautiful essays, <laughs> and some people wrote, um, I did thing 12 today. <clears throat> you know, everybody's getting the CD credit, um, and, and maybe if, if anybody has an opinion on this one, you could share it with us, but, you know, sh should we, if we are to do it in the future, set a minimum length for a blog post, for example. This, this is kind of the only quote-unquote solution we've come up with. Um, you know, I know some of the folks on here were, were the folks who wrote more elegant posts uh, and more longer posts, uh, but it's, it's something we're thinking about and it's something we're, we're open to suggestions should anybody have them either now or, or via email in the future. Um, does anybody else have 
things, or is that pretty much it? Oh, Pam, Pam has the comment. Go ahead, Pam. I just would like to comment on behalf of some of my staff. Um, I did a lot of mine at home, and so I had more time. But I know some of my staff who were trying to complete these at work because either they didn't have access to them at home or they just wanted to get them done at work, which was fine. That's what we intended for people to do this as part of their work time. Um, but they would have, they might only have an hour to actually work on something when they weren't aware, when they weren't at the desk, and so they would spend 50 minutes actually doing the thing, and then it came time to do the, then they had to do the blog post real fast, so they didn't get a lot written. So I think sometimes you have to. Assume that people have spent the majority of their time actually doing the thing rather than writing the blog post. We we are definitely making that assumption. <laughs> uh, I, you know I don't want anybody to to think we're you know we're criticizing. We do understand the situation, um, but we did get some comments from people who wrote longer posts saying, but other people it, it looks like they they didn't. Um, so we're we're not sure we're going to impose a minimum length. Uh, should we continue with this? Uh, we're just it's it's something that that needs to be considered and and see where we want to go with it from here but yeah, thank you Pam for your input that uh, does um, you know, explain in some situations what's going on. Another way of possibly we're dealing with it that I just thought of was when we do see someone who just said I did thing 12 and if we could then respond to them with a comment on their blog saying that's great can you tell me what you thought about it you know just trying to entice them a little so they don't have to do it at that sitting when they're doing the blog post and get a discussion going it's in their comments and that would definitely be acceptable and appropriate of showing a little bit more in depth um discussion that was going on about it like you know did you like this part or how about that part you know anything like that that we could get a discussion going with them do you want to move on to our, um, our last one since Judy just left a comment uh, in the, the okay. kind of segue? Um, yeah, Judy just commented in the text chat that actually is right into our next slide and point of discussion is future plans. Are we going to do this again? Um, what are we going to do? Uh, we've had lots of people say that they, as one part of their um, thing 23 was us asking if we did this again, would you want to do it? And I think most people are pretty much saying, sure, yeah, in any way, I'd love to um, do it again. Um, so that is in our minds of doing something. Um, we're not sure what yet. Um, we might need a break <laughs> on our side from reading 100 so mud blogs every day. But, you know, um, but thinking about it, um, Judy says in the text chat, um, let's do it again, but in smaller increments. I spent most Sunday evenings working on the things, but it was a pleasant break from regular life, I think. <laughs> and I think, Judy, sometimes you were actually doing it very early Monday morning and timestamps were accurate. I know that. One of the ideas we've had um, is actually a little maybe different from the way other organizations have done this. What other organizations that are starting to do it again have um, uh, kind of taken a year off and then done another 23 things. Um, one of the suggestions that has been put to us, and, and I want to stress that none of this is written in stone. We're still discussing amongst ourselves if we want to do this and exactly how. Um, but to have sort of an ongoing things so that maybe one or two topics a month continuously so that for these two weeks, here's the new topic. If you want to do it, You've got these two or three weeks, go ahead and do it. You can get the credit for it. If the next thing you don't have the time you're not interested in, you don't have to do that one. So instead of a specific time frame with a specific number of things, more of a continual number of things. Do Each what, thing is its own individual little. Right. Each thing is its own program in and of itself. 
Um, we got uh, Nicole left a comment in the text chat, so I'll read that out here. I'm just eyeballing it. Uh, I want to add my two cents worth here. I'm a younger library director, and I really like the fact that most of these teachings allowed some of my older coworkers familiarity in the reach of new technologies where most of them tend to be lacking. And yes, because most of the smaller libraries are unable to travel without closing the library. Salutations were a very cool program that taught all of us, uh, even those who consider themselves rather tech savvy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this, I, I, I hope I speak for all of us. In fact, I'm sure I do. This was a lot of work at our end. <laughs> um, I mean, it was fun. Don't get us wrong, but yeah, we, we might need to take that a little bit of a break. I did notice that the people that think of themselves as being tech savvy, I did notice in a lot some people's blogs, certain posts were a lot more a quick, obviously more quickly written and kind of just, uh, oh, I've been using YouTube for years. My kids show up to me all the time. Oh, yeah, I already have a Flickr account. But then there'd be the thing that they'd never heard of before, too, that comes up like two weeks later. So even if you are, yeah, a tech savvy person, one of these learning 2.0 programs, you may learn something new. And if we do decide to do a future one, keep an eye on what the new things coming up are. It might be something you've done, and you might explore and discover something new about that thing, or it might be something you've never heard of. And if it's something you do already do, you don't have to do it at all. You know? So I'm glad that we did get a lot, a range of people using it. Um, and I did discover as I was reading some blogs um, backwards, starting <laughs> with 23 things, how people did seem to change with how they were posting at the beginning being much more, um, and this goes into the confidence thing that Susan was talking about, or much more hesitant with their blogging and what they are doing, and that they did finally get, um, you can see their posts become longer and more in depth and they're you know, getting into it a lot more as the time went on. And my coworkers are still complaining I don't log into IM enough. So, you know, not everybody does everything that we talked about in this program. <laughs> I'm there every day if you'd like to chat with me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the land, by the way. <laughs> and I think it's important to know that not every, just like, what's that quote? Somebody did Ranganathan's. Oh, every every book, every this person, book every person, person is book or has a book same or something. Thing goes with technology. Not all of us here like each and every one of these things, but you know, um, so some of us like blogging and writing, and some of us don't. Some of us like ISM, some of us don't. And um, I think it was kind of interesting. Um, most people were not very sure of Twitter, but we had a couple of people who actually uh, participated in the program who are now prolific tweeters, so that's kind of interesting. I, 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 before, we're going to do the prizes next, um, but I just, Robin, you just logged in, uh, and you were the other person that I had specifically requested try to make it, and I want to thank you for doing that. Is there any chance we can put you on the spot for like two minutes to, to just get some feedback from you of what you thought of the program, what you liked, didn't like, what we maybe could have done differently? And if you have a microphone, just hold down your control key, and that'll turn on your mic, and uh, just hold it down while you're speaking. Oh, there. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I really enjoyed the program. Um, I have to say that I'm a little silly today because I'm on Mountain Time, and so... That's why I'm not here. I just realized you guys are on Central Time. Well, that's okay. Go ahead with any comments or anything you want to say. We still have okay. some time here. Um, I really enjoyed the program. As a fairly new library, Nebraska librarian, I really learned a lot. Um, I don't know how to put this. Um, it really made me think about how I could incorporate some of these tools into not only my personal life, like some of them, like I never used RSS feeds before this class and now I use them every day and not just for personal weird non-library related stuff but I do a lot of I listen to a lot of um, professional things and um, or I find a lot of professional things like articles and blogs to read which um, kind of helps me to be connected when I'm out here in western Nebraska kind of in the middle of nowhere
Great, thanks. Yeah, I, RSS has completely changed the way I get information, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that others have, have caught on to that too. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and do prizes. Um, we were going to do this on video, but uh, you'll just have to trust us that this is fair. Um, we have uh, everybody who completed got their name in their library on a slip of paper. We have nine of these Creative Zen MP3 players to give away. Uh, they're nice. They're sitting here right in front of us, and I, I kind of <laughs> wish I had one. Uh, they even play FM radio, so you know there you go. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of go around the table here and draw out names. So I'm gonna go ahead and reach in first, and I've got this slip of paper here, and we've got uh, Mary Boynton of Hastings Public Library. Uh, you have one an MP3 player. And this is, I've got Kathy Nelson, Stromsburg Public Library. You are our second winner. Yay. Don Weber, Gordon Rushville Elementary School. All right. I have Melissa, this is Susan, I have Melissa Nielsen from John Stahl Library in West Point, and I think that she was actually a board member. All right, great. Uh, and I've got somebody who's actually on the call right now. Pam, I have drawn your name at Hastings Public Library, so I, I think Hastings people are going to like me after today. Uh, so we're going to be sending <laughs> to you. Flooding. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, I have another Hastings Public Library one, um, Elizabeth Hange. Hajni. Hajni? Yeah. Okay. Um, next one is Linda Reisinger at Orchard Public. I have Elaine uh, Tobias at Pilger Public Library. Pilger Public Library. I always have to make a land and pronounce that for Okay, and then we have last one here, uh, Lauren, Lauren Lofgren of Wayne Public Library. So those are our nine winners. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Ryan. Um, we definitely want to thank the people who, uh, the groups that donated the prizes. Yes. Uh, ITART, NEMA, and NLA, thank you very much. They donated uh, the funds to uh, purchase these things. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you very much. Them. Yes. It wouldn't have been possible. You wouldn't have won anything. <laughs> we will be contacting anyone who isn't here today um, to let them know all that they have won um, and sending these out in the mail sometime like, within the next week. Yeah probably, <laughs> yeah, probably today or tomorrow, yeah. actually. Um, so we'll get that. Um, everybody whose name is orange on the list is getting 15 CE. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be submitting those names to the appropriate people here at the commission. Um, so that would be um, Laura, Laura, Laura Johnson. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, I would say give it a week or two just to make sure that all the paperwork gets done. Uh, but then if you've got any questions about the CE after that, uh, go ahead and give Laura a call, and she can confirm or deny uh, the fact <laughs> that you have gotten 15 CE credits. Um, and so at this point, we're done. Uh, does anybody else have anything they want to say? And while we're doing that, I'll read Judy's comment in the text, which is congratulations to all of us for joining in the journey and reaching the beginning of the new one. So yes, I, I'm not sure I could put it that better myself. <laughs> so. And we will definitely keep thinking of ways to uh, carry on uh, from this and keep the momentum going and looking for ways to keep that community alive mm -hmm. one way or another. So. Yeah, and if you have any ideas, please go ahead and send them to any one of us or emails right there on the screen. Robin, I see you uh, have your hand raised, go ahead. Well, yes, yeah, since I am silly and didn't come till the end, I wanted to say that besides all of the technology-related things that I learned, one of the best things, and you guys may have discussed this before I got here, but one of the best things about this class was the fact that I got to interact with so many of the other librarians across the state, which, again, is kind of hard for me being out here in western Nebraska. And I think I learned a lot just by reading other people's posts and kind of the reaction. So um, I think that this was a great program and that we should definitely, definitely do it again. And obviously not the same program, but you know. Yeah. Um, uh, Pam, you have a comment? Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys because I know it was a lot of work on your end and I just appreciate so much the fact that that the commission gave you guys the go-ahead to do this and allowed you the work time to, to get it all put together and monitor it and all those things you had to do to, to make it work. So thank you all very much. 
it's a great experience for all of us. It was fun reading everybody's Yay. blog. Yes. Yes. That was everybody. Yeah. I feel like I know you guys better. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely true. And, and, and maybe one or two I know too much about now. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Uh, okay, any other final comments anybody wants to wrap up with? Yeah, lots of applause and laughing. Yes, we all had a good time. Um, as we said, we'll be keeping in touch with everyone. Um, if you keep up your blogs, that's great. We'll I've got you all in my RSS readers, so if you post something, I'll uh, read it. Yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> <laughs> and you can keep an eye on each other's blogs as well. Um, no, okay, thank you very much for attending. This session has been recorded and will be posted up sometime this afternoon for future reference. Thanks bye. a lot. Bye. Thanks, bye.